Hello everybody, thank you very much for watching my videos, and I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Today we will be making an e-tank. Now an e-tank uses electrolysis as a process to remove rust from steel or cast iron. While you certainly can sand, brush, or even sandblast the rust off of metal, that process can be labor intensive or it may damage the piece that you're working on. Using an e-tank can also be very helpful in the restoration of cast iron cookware. Taking a powered brush to a valued cast iron pan would damage the surface. So using an e-tank comes in as a great alternative. Even though you might be a little apprehensive on building an e-tank, it's a fairly simple thing to put together, and let's run through that now. Now we're going to do a quick overview of the general items needed, but we'll build one together in a moment, have a more detailed look at everything at that time. I'll also have a list of the items needed in the video notes. Let's start with our container. There are so many good plastic containers out there that you're going to have an easy time finding something that fits your needs. Keep in mind that the container needs to be big enough for the piece that you're working with. Now you're going to need a non-conductive support to span the tank. On top of the board, I place a bar that overhangs the edge just a little. This bar has a hole that matches the hole in the board. Now we're going to put an eye bolt through the board and the bar. This serves both as a support for your part, as well as a conduit for the electricity to reach the part. We'll eventually use a steel wire to connect from the eye bolt to the part that you're going to be cleaning. Now we're going to add our steel plate. It's important that this is regular steel, not stainless or galvanized. Now to our container, we're going to add enough water to cover the part. I usually like to go about an inch above. Okay, to the water, we're going to then add Arm & Hammer's Super Washing Soda. This is not baking soda. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. This is sodium carbonate. It's different. We add one tablespoon of sodium carbonate for every gallon of water. You're gonna to need to use a standard car battery charger. When everything is connected to a car battery charger, the process begins. So now that we've had a quick review, let's jump in and build one together. For this project, I'm going to be working with the lathe bed from a 1938 Craftsman wood lathe. This piece is quite large and will need a container that can match that. Thankfully, I was able to locate a box exactly the right size. I've cut a board about two inches longer than the box. I'm marking off the board to make the drill holes for the eye bolts. I found a metal bar that should work, keeping in mind that it needs to overhang the board on one end a little bit. This overhanging bit is where we're going to connect one of the electrodes from the battery charger. Now I'm marking off on the metal bar where I'm going to be putting the drill holes to match the holes that are in the wood. You can, of course, simply drill the hole through the metal. However, I happen to have a Roper Whitney hole punch, and I do love to use it whenever I can. Now, in order to connect these two pieces, you're going to need two eye bolts, four washers, and four nuts. Tighten them up and make sure that they're nice and snug. Okay, your board and your rod are all connected and ready to go. I'm measuring the interior of the container in order to calculate the volume. It's a pretty straightforward calculation. Length, 
times width times height will give you the cubic inches. Then you divide that by 231, the number of cubic inches in a gallon. I've decided to use two plates in my tank, and as a result, I have to connect them with a wire. I've used a portion of a jumper cable, and I'm going to be attaching two wire clips to either end. I'm going to strip away a little bit of the insulation on the middle of this wire, and that's where I'm going to connect my lead from the battery charger. Now we're going to attach our steel plates to the sides of the container using some clamps. Here I'm test fitting the piece into the tank to make certain that we've got good clearance on either side. If your part is touching the electrodes on either side, it will not work. Now I'm going to test fit the cable that's going to connect the two panels together. I'm now attaching the wire to the eye hook that's going to wrap around my piece inside of the tank. Now that we've test fit everything and we know that it all fits, I've taken everything out and I'm going to fill the tank with water. Now it's time to add the sodium carbonate. We calculated the volume to be 15.5 gallons and then therefore 15.5 tablespoons of sodium carbonate. Okay, it's time to add our workpiece and keeping in mind that it is connected with that wire from the eye bolt right to the piece, just kind of wrapped around. Now it's time to add the steel sheet electrodes back in. Then we connect the wire to both of our plates that join them together. Okay, we're gonna be prepping our battery charger. Remember to keep it unplugged at this stage. We're gonna go ahead and switch this to 10 amps. We're gonna take the positive clamp from the battery charger and connect it to our wire that joins both plates together. We're gonna take the negative wire from the battery charger and connect it to the bar that spans the tank. This is the line that will connect to the part that you're trying to remove the rust from. Now that everything's connected, we're going to go ahead and plug in the battery charger. Once it's on, you'll start seeing little tiny bubbles coming up from the plates. Little by little, you'll start to see, well, a bunch of junk start to float on the surface. In an hour, you'll start to have quite a thick layer of goop. After about eight hours, you'll start to get a pretty rusty color surface. As this process can take many hours, you're going to want to make certain that you have all of the electrical considerations and that it is in a well-ventilated area. I sometimes get asked whether or not this process will generate a lot of heat. It does get warm, and with running this for 8, 24 hours or what have you, it, it, it can build up a little bit, but as you'll see in the thermal image here, it's not really excessive. It's just sort of warm to the touch. My part is pretty lightly covered in rust. I'm going to take it out after this 8 hours. You can always unplug the battery charger, pull the piece out of the bath a little bit, and check the condition of the surface. 
Some pieces may require more time. I've had pieces going as long as 24 hours. Once you pull your piece from the tank, give it a wipe down, a little brush off, and you should be good to go. This can be a fun project to put together and it will give you fantastic results every time. I want to thank you for watching my video today. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to share them.